and the outdated tactics get left behind. The next time we stop, marketers look around when your brain keeps going down. It's the Jim and Ann show. Here we go. I'm Jim. Here's Ann. Jim. <laughs> And I have a question for you. This is a question almost every single client at one point asks. And that is, how much content should my website have? And what should that content consist of? I know that's a popular question. And it brings me back to those days when we were like, how long my article should be? Is it Should it be 300 words? Should it be then in a couple of years that there would be 500 words, <laughs> then, then 1,000 words? And now, I mean, it's like long. Everyone should create long form content. And maybe that's even even. Well, you, you know what? You know what? Let me even jump in for a second, because what used to happen is everyone would have a huge site with all different variations of keywords. Yep. And then it won't. And then I think Pan, Panda came along. And they said, all right, we can't have a big, long, thin site. We're going to have these monster pages now that have everything that kind of targeted all that yep. stuff. So I can I can totally relate to SEO need to bring anything to numbers. Like we need to have these many pages. We need to have to have these many can words. Tell me about the keyword density percent too. Keyword density. <laughs> yep. We need to have something. Oh, there is always a number and I get it because it's a technical industry. We do deal with a lot of uh, reverse engineering of what the machine should like, and that's our job. But we've moved away from that, and it, it happened like years ago. Google understands much more than just keyword matching or just uh, this, is, this is how many keywords I need to make this page relevant to the search query. It's, it's not like that anymore. Google knows what the user wants and uh, how to give them that, which page satisfies that intent or that need. So instead of thinking in terms of how much content we need or how many pages we need, we need to think how to make a website that really helps the users, that creates that resource that it never need to leave that website. And how much does it take to create that resource? And it's usually an ongoing work. So it's usually never done because the need changes, the market changes, the user User changes, the trends change, everything is changing. So suddenly you need to create more and more. There are competitors appearing in the same industry. There are uh, something new happening in that industry. So for to keep making relevant content, you need keep to keep creating it. So you need to keep pushing you new something. It's not about, and again, another um, <laughs> a popular question in that also is how frequently should I update my blog? There is also another uh, thing that many clients are asking and many people are wondering about. And again, there is no answer. Update it when you have something to say, when there is some need to satisfy, when you find a new question to answer, when, when a client calls and asks something and you feel like it's something you need to update and create a blog post about. Let's break it down a little bit here. So <laughs> if someone has a website, and let's say they sell microphones. I'm looking at my microphone here. So let's say, you know, your jimsmicrophones.com. And let's say, you know, I've got 500 different microphones that I sell. Those 500 are maybe in, you know, there's five main categories of microphones. Each category has 100 products. Okay, so that's kind of my website. Now let's 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 talk about a couple things, which is, how much content should be on the pages that I currently have, you know, so I have, you know, my home page, I have my category pages and I have my products page. And then I guess the next question would be, what is the other content that I should have and what should that be and how much of that should be? So let's, let's kind of break down, you know, my magical gyms, microphone.com site. Let's look at the, let's look at the homepage. How much content should be on the homepage, Jan, do you think? There's a lot of companies where their homepages have very little text. You know, it's maybe a big picture, 
maybe a search box or a form and a bunch of pretty pictures and hardly any text. And I know I always look at that as usually with a normal website, the homepage has the most amount of backlinks to it. It has the most amount of power. It has, of all the pages of your website, it has the best chance of ranking for stuff. So I always recommend, you know, having a lot of content on the homepage because you're not going to rank for it if you don't have it in that sense. Um, There are different cases for that. I think that we, when planning a website, we should think about all kinds of search intent or even customer intent. Like where, yes. where, where the, so there are, there are different, like with microphones, the homepage you, will be usually branded search. And think about that in that terms, when people already know you, how to make that last um, thing for, for them to click and buy. Like you need to, be, to have a trusted brand. You need to specify how long you've been in the industry, stuff like that. But other search intent is... People are still at the beginning of understanding what they need and how to choose that. And that would be informational search intent, which would hopefully grab attention and lead those people through the uh, sales funnel. So that would be how to choose, where to start, maybe different, comparing different uh, specs, like what I need. I know that I need one for Mac, and then would be easy to connect. So that would be my search intent, but I'm very beginning of that buying research. Then there are category pages. Those people already know what they okay, want. Okay. So now we're in, mm-hmm. let's move to the category pages. So let's say I've got, you know, five different categories of microphones and a hundred products under there. How much content should be on a category page? I don't need much content on those pages as a user. I need directions how to make a better decision, a better informed decision. Here is by model. What if I have this model of uh, Mac? How do I filter all those results to that model? So that is useful, but not much content. For the product page, again, specifications, warranty, all that useful information and uh, reviews, of course. What about, you know, if I write stuff about questions about microphones and I have my products and all that, I I think one of the pieces that I might be missing with my website is something that can attract links. To me, that'd be like another big area that of additional pages that you need. You need something to stand out from your competitors. You could try for things like viral content. So maybe something like which microphones do the most famous singers use or amazing tricks with microphones. And are one of the guys from the who swinging the swinging and throwing microphone or maybe times when microphones hit other people on stage or something, something funny, exciting, or maybe the whole a scientific page on how a microphone works, uh, the science behind microphones. It takes time to come up with really like uh, unique and ideas that do have viral potential because we are we live in the time when everything has already been viral. <laughs> but it's still doable. It's very, very still doable. The people still uh, share things around and link to it. So definitely that's something else you need to continuously create because not every piece of yours will uh, will go viral. So you will have to try and try, come up with something new uh, on a regular basis for that to work, definitely. And, it, and, you know, and another thing too, is if you create really good expert content that's useful in an area over time, you know, ideally over time, it starts to get some backlinks, it starts to rank, it starts to get found, you start to get more backlinks. Like sometimes a really good piece can attract a lot of backlinks over time as well. Girls look around when 